things. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how some of your friends, some of your besties, your BFFs, are narcissists or toxic people. Stay tuned for more. Like and subscribe. Thank you. Some of your best friends are narcissists, y'all. Some of your closest people around you happen to be narcissists as well or narcissistic. And of course, if you're new here, I'm actually a diagnosed narcissist. A lot of people talk like narcissists are only involved in intimate relationships, y'all. Some of your parents can be narcissists. Some of your best friends can be narcissists, y'all. The best friend, narcissist, or toxic person is really your biggest enemy in disguise. They will always seemingly try to center themselves in your life or your problems or your success. Typically, they are competing against you subtly or overtly. Sometimes they just do it out in the open. Like, they're, they're your biggest competition. Imagine your toxic-ass bestie being your biggest hater on the planet that doesn't want to see you succeed or they just don't want to see you doing better than them. Like, your your friendship is goes well uh, if you're not doing better than them or if they can't take advantage of you in some way, shape, or form. Like, if you succeed past them in life, they, they tend to not want to be around you as much. So yeah, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, y'all, beautiful folks. Yes, yes, yes. Before we hop into today's episode, y'all, make sure you hop over to Amazon, take a look at my self-love journal, Lee Hammock, I Love Me, a self-love journal, help you rebuild their self-love and, you know, identity. If you already have the journal, hit that five stars for me, please, please, please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Seriously, seriously, I appreciate it. But yeah, a lot of people want me to talk about narcissistic friends and BFFs, BFFs and associates and things like that. People you have around in your, your inner circle. Yeah, y'all. Toxic ass friends. Absolutely. 100% exist out here. That's just, y'all, literally. That's just the way it goes. Some of your, like, narcissists don't just exist in intimate relationships or partnerships or just your a parental figure and things of that, of that nature. Because if you think about it, if somebody is a narcissistic husband, they have friends. You see what I'm saying? So they are also going to be friends. They're going to be narcissistic friends. They're, uh, they, if they have a narcissistic wife, that wife is going to be a narcissistic friend. If somebody else is going to have a bestie that's a narcissist. And a lot of these relationships last a long time. Like imagine me, you don't, people don't, people don't just get trauma bonded to their significant other job. You can absolutely be trauma bonded to a friend. To a job, yeah, you, you get you get traumatized in different situations. Your friends can traumatize you. Your friends can put you through trauma. Your friend can sleep with your partner, can sleep with your spouse, can sleep with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. You see what I'm saying? They will sleep with your significant other. They will do that type of stuff, y'all. Narcissistic friends, toxic friends, are absolutely your big. They, they it's like your, it's like having your enemy in your it's like having your enemy in your inner circle. Like your enemy comes to, to you disguised your worst enemy comes to you disguised as your best friend as a good friend as somebody that you feel like you could lean on for a long time but they are yeah narcissist people who are narcissists in your friends you will never really ever you will never ever really truly know them you you never really truly know them years in 10 15 20 years of friendship 30 years of friendship you will never ever truly know that person for who they really are you might think you do you're like oh, but we grew up together i know them do you do you do you? you might but ask yourself do i really know this person did, did i really expect this person to, to do this did i expect this person to do that did i expect this person to be able to put me through this did i expect this person to go behind my back did i expect this person to be super jealous of me did i expect this person to hold grudges against me did i expect this person to do this right here there's a lot of moving pieces and a lot of questions you have to ask yourself when you're talking about narcissistic people y'all ain't dealing with narcissists and toxic people that's just one of the things, you know, do I really know this person? Because narcissists, y'all really, we, we, we just how, who we are. That's one of the things that's like you, especially the covert ones, the overt ones, you can kind of tell the overt. Cause me, myself personally, I have, you know, I have, even my therapist said this, my wife said this, you know, a lot of your best friends, the people closest to you over the last probably decade and, and some change have been narcissists. Like you hang around narcissists, like you attract them to your friendships. Yeah, and I know because I feel like we are we I know them, they know me. But pretty much every single narcissistic friend I have has has betrayed me in some way shape or form. Including one of my best friends. My one of my best friends for years went but went behind my back and did some old dirty stuff, y'all. I had to cut him off. You have like sometimes you have to go no contact with your friends. Well, how do we how do we spot these narcissistic friends out? How do we how do we how can we tell if the, if our friend is a narcissist? Y'all say no to them. Set a boundary. Make them feel left out. 
Make them the butt of a joke. You will, yeah, you will see. You will really see. You will really ever, ever see. You see what I'm saying? You will really see if you make them the butt of the joke. You say no to them. You set a boundary. They'll show their. They'll show their. Tr they'll show you truer. Their truer colors. They'll show you. They'll show you close to who they actually are. The covert ones can be very passive aggressive towards you. The overt narcissistic friend is going to be. I, I call it active aggressive. They're going to be active aggressive to you. You're going to start smear campaigns on you. They might become violent. Seriously, your friends will try to. Yo, if your friend's a toxic narcissistic person, they might try to hurt you. They might try to take you through the ringer. They might try to put you through some pain and put you through some suffering because you bring, bring shame to them. You mean your narcissistic friend? I didn't realize my cat was down here. Your friend that's possibly a narcissist is going to be ultra toxic, y'all. They, they just are. They might, not, they might not present that way. And it might take some kind of soul searching to see that they are truly toxic because the real covert ones do it in subtle ways. They do subtle things. They spread little rumors about you. They spread, they talk about you behind your back a little bit. They plant seeds of ill content against you. They spread a smear campaign, but it's like on one side of the bread. You see what I'm saying? Uh, a smear campaign from an overt malignant narcissist might be on both sides of the bread, gooped, gooped on there, gooped on there, like a bunch of jelly and peanut butter, just gooped on both sides. They might, they might dip it into peanut butter. You see what I'm saying? But a covert narcissistic person might smear you on one side. Just smear you to a certain few people just to isolate you. Covert narcissistic friends, y'all, they like to isolate you away from people as well. They like to keep you all to themselves. They'll, they'll ruin your other friendships. They'll be jealous of your relationship. If you get, if you have been best friends for a long time and you get a significant other, they might become super jealous, hyper jealous of your significant other and try to drive a wedge between you and your new partner. You know what I mean? They might actually try to drive a wedge between you and your new partner. They might actually try to be jealous of you and sleep with your new partner. They want a lot of times they want your life, y'all. Even if they're if they feel like they're doing but doing better than you, they might actually want your life. They might be absolutely jealous of you, y'all. You know say if you do some soul searching, if you like turn on your narcissist radar, it's like it's like putting on a, a new set of glasses, like a new set of a new radar, like a, some narcissistic binoculars where you see you see like in a <laughs> you know the infrared spectrum, you see it in the toxic spectrum. Like you see it in the narcissistic spectrum. You like you go go through everything like black and white, but then the narcissist are like red. You, you might do the, you might do this, the little narcissist narcissistic spectrometer or whatever you want to call it. You just you might hit your hit your friend and if your friend be bright red. You like, I thought you were I thought you were black or white. Oh no. You 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 you, you like oh your mama start beeping, your daddy start beeping. Everybody everybody beeping and turning red, y'all. That's how it be happening sometimes. That's seriously how it be happening. And that's why I tell a lot of people, you get into these situations, a lot sometimes your friends are the toxic narcissistic ones, y'all. That's just how it goes. And like I say, I know I'm I'm not trying to beat a dead horse, anything like that, but yeah, seriously. You ha might have to go no contact with your friend. You know what I mean? Because they spread rumors about you. They compete with you. If y'all have, they, they, like sometimes they mirror your style and try to replace you in your life. That's why sometimes they'll go after your boyfriend or your girlfriend. That's why sometimes they'll go after your husband or wife. They'll try to replace you in your life. That's why sometimes they'll try to integrate themselves into your friend groups and eliminate you from the friend group. They'll take your style. They'll dress like you. They'll start picking up your mannerisms. They'll start talking like you. Um, they're sort of acting like you. I'm just telling you, y'all, and they will try to successfully, sometimes they are successful in replacing you in your own friend group. Like, they start going out with your friends and not inviting you. That, and that'll suck. You're like, oh, we, we didn't just invite, sorry, we, we were too busy. I thought, I thought, we thought your BFF invited you. Oops, I forgot. Gotcha. You see what I'm saying? You have to be very, very careful with narcissistic, toxic friends, y'all. And yeah, sometimes they traumatize you. Yo. They put you through the ringer. They do horrible things to you. And it's hard to cut them off. It's, it's not easy to cut a friend off, y'all. Even my friend of, like I said, my, 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 my most recent friend of like six years, we were like partners, like business partners, all kinds of stuff. He went behind my back, started spreading rumors, doing a little dirty stuff, being covert about it, be doing a little dirty stuff, being covert about it. I found out about it. Had to cut him off. That was tough, y'all. That was tough because friends, good friends, don't come around, come along more often. But like, he was super hyper competitive with me, y'all. He would never ever celebrate my success unless he could somehow take 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 some kind of credit for, it or act like he helped me do it. You see what I'm saying? We were good real estate agents together, but then we, I became, I kind of started veering off into my social media stuff. He started telling people, started telling people he was my manager. I'm like, bro, stop doing that. Like, why do you do that? You know what I mean? I know why he was doing it, but it's just annoying. Then at the end, he just started doing way too much. I had to cut him off, and that was a tough thing to do.
He tried to, he tried to hoover. Your narcissistic friends will try to hoover you. They'll try to reach out to you, y'all. They devalue, like I said, love bomb, your friends will love bomb you, devalue you, you and discard you. And sometimes they will hoover you as well. Like they, if you are a good friend, if you are a good, some narcissists can get supply from their friends too. So if you are a good friend, they're not just going to let, they're not, if you kind of try to cut them off, they're going to, they might try to get back into your life. They might try to hoover you and come back into your life in some way, shape or form because they want to be your friend. They want to be around you. They want to, they have their energy. They want to take advantage of whatever situation there is to take advantage of. You know what I mean? There's a lot of, there's a lot of situations going on right here, y'all, that you, when you're dealing with narcissistic people, this is part, part of it. You can have a narcissistic, toxic ass friend that is out there trying to hurt you. That's out there trying to replace you. That is super jealous of you and out there just with no good intent. There is no good intent that comes from narcissistic, toxic ass friends, y'all. There just isn't. You know, they can be, like I said, they can be a good friend until something triggers them, until some type of jealousy triggers them, until some type of rage triggers them, until some type of insecurity is triggered by you or somebody else around them. Like they can be a good friend and be a good ally until something in their life triggers them. Uh, something you, your success might trigger them your happiness your marriage your kids whatever triggers them might set them off on a, a just a, a rampage of toxicity in your life just like a subtle smear campaign trying to replace you and then you, when you find out who they really are it might traumatize you it may be hard to let your friend go you mean forgiving your friend for doing something horrible to you taking your friend back in your life it's just like taking back a toxic boyfriend or toxic girlfriend toxic husband toxic wife you see what i'm saying, you see what I'm saying? going at least staying in the toxic workplace just be very wary of those toxic friends, y'all, because they will discard you. And like I said, like I said, if your friends, your toxic friend gets a new supply friend, they will discard you just like in an intimate relationship. They'll get rid of you for a, to- a new BFF. You see what I'm saying? Just like an intimate relationship, y'all. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this video, y'all. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel if you already have it. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. You are a mental healness rock star and I appreciate you for being here. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the screen to subscribe to the channel and watch another one of my videos on my playlist. There's also a link available up here for you to purchase my kids book. Remember, it's not your fault on Amazon. So check that out. Thank you. I will see you in the next video. Peace.